this is our weekly <coughs> show uh, coming uh, to you from our GSN, Gizo STEM Network. My name is Milton. We are going out to discuss uh, STEM issues this evening uh, within uh, some minor minority groups. Um, Helen Klaus Mathis, um, biophysicist, uh, STEMmer. Um, happy to be here. I don't consider myself to be a minority because me being African descent, um, there are more people in African descent in the world than any other people in the world, so I don't think that I consider myself to be a minority, but in either way, I'm happy to be here to discuss issues. Thank you. Yeah, I'm with Mr. Clausell on that. I don't consider myself to be a, a minority as well. Um, I'm black. Anyway, my name is Darius Wynn. I'm a chemistry educator, uh, author of Chemistry for Kids. Uh, it's available on lulu.com, so please do stop by and check it out. <coughs> okay, guys, uh, so where do, where do you want to get moving tonight? Where do you want to go? So as far as uh, education, uh, STEM education, or specifically uh, within uh, the black community or any other ethnic group for that reason? Well, like I said, this is the issue um, in regards to education. First and foremost, foremost, education is the key uh, because um, an individual that's very educated, uh, particularly African-American, black, whatever you want to call them, that's very educated, um, uh, very confident, um, and very independent-minded. That's the mm -hmm. key, independent-minded. If you have those three going for you, you're considered a threat because you are capable of overthrowing the power structure. Um, or if you can get a group of people that think on the same page as you with your same <coughs> attributes, you are capable of overthrowing the power structure. So um, the key with education is at a young age, we need to teach the, our kids to be, we need to tell our kids what those three things that they need to become very successful. You need to be very confident at what you do, do what you're passionate at doing. Um, don't do nothing to get a paycheck. Do something that you're very passionate about doing in STEM areas. Um, you know, that will help your confidence. Um, always willing to learn because if you don't know yourself, if you don't know anything, people will always outsmart you, always outwit you. Okay? And the third most critical, critical piece of information is you have to be independent-minded. Because if you're independent-minded, you know, you don't, nobody can control you. Nobody can control you. If you have your own product, if you have your own ability to produce and your own good and service to produce, then um, nobody can break you because that's the, that's the issue right now in terms of education. We have a good amount of educated people, but they're not independent-minded. That's the key. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Wayne, uh, mm -hmm. he talks about uh, being independent, meaning able uh, to decide on making decisions being independent minded in your situation <coughs> how can you go about resolving uh, this independence I like Mr. Clausel's explanation uh, it was very thorough independence is uh, a very admirable quality in individuals um, how do I define it or how can people become independent <coughs> you simply have to be unafraid you simply have to be unafraid uh, you have to be willing to get out there and do things, try new things, meet new people, um, how do I say, entertain new philosophies, ideology, but also having the confidence enough to just stick with your own ideology and allow these, uh, these new experiences to, these new experiences, I'm sorry, to enrich um, what you already know and what you've already gone through. So um, for those individuals that are independent minded, uh, yeah, I do believe that they're going to be the pioneers for uh, education um, and new STEM, well, new STEM reforms in education. I'm sorry. So what, what I truly believe, uh, <coughs> in order, uh, to be independent, I think you have uh, to have, uh, like he said, you have uh, to have a level of confidence. Mm -hmm. And how do you acquire this level of confidence? This level of confidence is going to be acquired uh, through education. And uh, like he said earlier, do something you know that you are going to be good at. So nothing is going to be easy. Do not take out the easiest path. The easiest path does not always lead to success. So one thing that I always learn is that anything that you work hard at is going to be more rewarding to you at the end than something that is easier. So 
if you like something, let's say that uh, we talk about this in the past. If you know you are good at uh, repairing AC, just do that. That is still under the STEM field. Uh, let say that uh, you are good at uh, being a mechanic, just do that because uh, that still falls under uh, mechanical engineering. So if you know you you are good at something, just do it. And knowing you know you know how to do certain things, and that is going on to lead you to independence. That's correct. Um, independence is the key, and I think that's what's been holding uh, specifically the black community back. We have been trying to depend on um, government assistance, um, government uh, <coughs> just 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 other people to do certain things for us. Education is one of the things that we are depending on government to do for us. We have to have an independent mindset. Um, there, there has been a dependency complex um, for centuries. Well, not centuries, but at least a century in the black community. And I think that's what's been um, holding us back. Um, not to say that we're not lazy or anything like that, but <coughs> our minds tells us that we cannot be independent. We will work for other people, but we won't work for ourselves. We won't produce for ourselves, um, and but we will consume um, you know, to, to make it look like we are doing something with ourselves. So um, I think that's the, that's the number, that's the third um, bridge that we need to cross um, um, in order for the African-American or black community to, to get to where they need to be, independence. <clears throat> Mr. Cross said he is exactly right. We are too dependent. So what does that mean? We need uh, to break away from that. How do we become successful? So you cannot become successful when you have the tendency to work for somebody else all the time. So having what you call it an entrepreneur attitude, uh, become entrepreneurs uh, by uh, opening a store, by doing certain things. And I think, I think this is where we have been behind. So we are afraid. So we have uh, $1,000, we have uh, $2,000, but we are afraid not to invest that. We are afraid not to do something because uh, we are not sure, we are not too certain about uh, its return. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we don't want to invest it. We say, okay, if I have $1,000 now, I'll go ahead and spend it. I may not know exactly if my business is going to be a success or a failure, but you will never know until you do that. Yeah. You have to spend to earn more. So if we don't spend, we don't earn. This is what a lot of people fail to understand, especially in our community, and they are always looking for someone to give them something instead of creating their own doing. Well, well, now, I will say this now. Yeah, there are... What I mean by independence is, okay, um, there are entrepreneurs. Yeah, there are, in, there are entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. There's a strong entrepreneurship in the black community. <coughs> But in the STEM-related fields, there's not that much. Not like, that much. Like, like you know, you'll have a, a, well, okay, maybe you'll have a mechanic, um, you'll have a few plumbers, mm -hmm. but it's more so non-STEM-related areas mm -hmm. where you see a lot of entrepreneurship. Exactly. But in the STEM-related areas, you do not see much entrepreneurship. So, for instance, uh, you, my friend, uh, you are a chemist, uh, so most likely you may have to think about probably opening your own lab somewhere, uh, doing research. Uh, it may not be... Uh, it may be uh, somewhat somewhere in the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical or maybe doing uh, environmental uh, research. For instance, uh, sampling uh, some compounds in the environment. So you do water testing uh, for probably one thing we fail to realize at times, <coughs> we try to stay in a, in a big city where things are already there. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is uh, to go away move from away. the big city, Absolutely. move on to a smaller regions where things are not yet implemented. Developed, yeah yet develop, de develop and do it. And again, uh, your entrepreneurship idea does not have to be within the United States. It can be outside the country, outside the U.S., where things are not yet there, and you go ahead and implement that. So I was not talking uh, to uh, a, gentle a gentleman from Ethiopia uh, about a couple months back. Uh, he studied electrical engineering here at the university, but he wants to stay here. And uh, we were talking about uh, some uh, renewable energy as far as what did not have in, in Ethiopia. In Ethiopia, and I said, hey, why don't you go back there and try to do certain things, uh, providing us some form of electricity, uh, renewable energy, using uh, solar cells and things like that, so to do certain things. 
So <coughs> staying in this country where everything is almost there may not be so much in some areas, but you can also go outside the country where you can start and implementing on these ideas as an entrepreneur. Oh, that's a good strategy. Are you, are you sleeping? No, no, no. I'm, I'm here. I'm just thinking. I'm processing all of you guys' information. These are good, good ideas. I was actually thinking about, you know, starting up a laboratory, but not so much here, you know, uh, over in Haiti. You know, exactly, taking, exactly. For, taking for, my so, knowledge set. So you, you, you give a perfect example. <coughs> so Haiti, the way that I know it, not much is there. Yeah. So that means... Especially in terms of hands-on laboratory so equipment. In, in terms of hands-on. For instance, you know where things are in Haiti, right? Everything is basically local, localized. Everything is basically in the center of uh, Port-au-Prince. So everything is there. If you are outside of Port-au-Prince, and the provinces, and uh, you go to a hospital. Uh, many times, your sample is is a shipped to protocols to a laboratory, where they have want to analyze it. They have want to do the analysis, and then they ship it. The result, they ship the result to that local hospital. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is not even via fax; it is uh, via someone that is going there. So, therefore, there is on the computer and things like that. Oh, you can look look up look up, up the results and things like that. So imagine you open something like this there. So, not in port points, but outside port points mm -hmm. where they would be doing these things. Mm -hmm. Let's say they have like a five or seven clinics in that area. Guess what? You are going to be in charge of these uh, five clinics are doing testing for them. Mm -hmm. Or it could be anything environmental, uh, for that matter. It doesn't have to be in the clinical aspect, but it could be any other thing. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Well, self-sufficiency. Um, yeah, these guys make some awesome points. Uh, I need to start, you know, kicking myself in the butt so that I can start doing a little bit more work. And also, like, <coughs> and also, I would like to say that you know, we need to understand that, you know, black people, we've been doing um, stuff in the STEM for centuries, um, since the beginning of time. I mean, these people like Isaac Newton, um, Maxwell, um, Faraday, I mean, these guys, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go out and say a controversial statement and I'm doing my research. They're not the guys that have created all this stuff here. Now, I, I give Einstein his credit, he did his thing, but Isaac Newton, I mean, come on, man. I don't believe he created those laws of motion. I mean, But it, remember, you know, as Isaac Newton said that, uh, hey, I stood on the shoulder of giants. He was the one that said that, right? No, it was Einstein. And the thing is... Um, so I think he said that one, too. I, think I don't remember Einstein. Yeah, I, think I, mean, I don't remember that. Newton yeah. saying that. I thought it was Einstein. But Einstein. the thing is, um, you know, if you read the background <coughs> of these guys and how they created this stuff, the stuff doesn't even make sense how they did it. So it's, it's probably not even legit. So the point I'm saying is, the point I'm making is, black people probably created these things. These things. So <laughs> I like um, it. <laughs> but, but so we can I like do this. That's the point I'm trying to get you to see. We can do this. <laughs> And, and, I, I, and I think we need to teach the youth that at a very young age. This has been done before by black people, and it can be done, done again, and I, it will be done again. Mr. Clausel, can the, I? That's the thing that we need to teach our ch to children at a young age. This is the education that, okay. that, 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 that that's needed. Uh, it's perspective-based education. You know, the problem with our education, especially in terms of STEM, is that we are always fed images and the success stories of, of people that don't necessarily look like us. You give us some images of some people that are doing science-related work that look like us, and watch how, watch, how, watch how brilliant, watch how bright our children grow up to be. Watch how, how enthusiastic they'll be about going out there to explore and you know, um, discover new things. You know, we need perspective-based education. Perspective-based education, BBE, black-based <laughs> black education. PBE. Perspective. Oh, right, right, right. Black based. I don't know. I said PBD. So I, think, I, 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 think, I think it, it is uh, very <coughs> important uh, to show uh, people uh, that look like them. Yes. So especially Black based exactly. education. Because if you keep on telling me certain things, but everything that you tell me, no one looks like me. Do mm. you think I'm going to be interested? No way. No. You I can't may be interested at some point, but not to the extent that I would like to. So yeah. it is uh, very important whenever you go uh, to school or uh, you're learning about these things. Uh, so <coughs> because what happens is, I think 
Uh, one thing, I, I'm not trying uh, to be, uh, uh, trying uh, to bring race in here uh, to some extent, but I truly believe uh, the education system is biased toward uh, one specific group, one ethnic group, because uh, they always bring one type of individuals, one type of ethnic group, uh, this ethnic group uh, does everything. But while the others have been working so hard for centuries, but they have that invention, they have not been given any form of credit. Mm -hmm. I think that is a problem when it comes down to uh, the educational system. So we are not well represented when we have been around, when we have been there. Well, we, we've, abdicated, we've abdicated all our rights to, to influence, I'll say. You know, we have no influence in this country. We, we are, you know, you, you used the word earlier, minorities. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, these, these ethnic groups that, that control the educational institutions or that control, like, institutions, period, they consider us as children. We have no say-so whatsoever. Minors, minors. absolutely. Mm -hmm. They consider us as children, and we don't know uh, what's best for us. So we have to simply just, you know, go along with what they say. When we stop trying to be on terms with them, when we stop trying to deal with them and play on their level or play, um, how do I say, when we stop trying to compete with them in their own educational institutions and start competing with them in terms of constructing our own education institutions and teaching our own um, you know, material content and everything like that, then we'll probably have some say so. Then we'll probably be able to contend with these people on a, a, a state, a local, um, national, maybe even universal level. Right now we're just, we're babies. We're babies. You know, we've forgotten our place in the world. And it's high time that we, we, we remind ourselves where we come from. Okay, so now, <coughs> now you and I are talking about this. We are talking about this. Uh, in terms of uh, the future generation. So, how do we pass this notion of uh, self uh, reliance exactly uh, be independent so how do we because we we came from a long way absolutely we, we were not there uh, where we are we we're not there 56 years ago so right. progress has been made right so <coughs> how do we continue on that same First. trend uh, so therefore my next generation is going to, have to be better off and then the way that I am today. So where they make a difference in our society. Okay, first thing first, um, we take black children out of these educational you know, institutions. We stop teaching them that they were, they were slaves, you know? I mean, sure, that was some, some, that was some second in their entire history, but you know, that's not, it's, that's not but really the where they come from. The interesting from. thing is this, I do not, agree with the term uh, like you said trying to teach them that were slaves I was not a slave my parents were not the slaves mm -hmm. and I well believe, that they're descendants of slaves believe, uh, my, grand, my grandfather my grandparents okay you want to get technical were, they were, were the were descendants slave. of slaves so therefore people inside of the history books look like of slave. but what happened <coughs> is we just have uh, just because our, my, my parents were not my grandparents were not and I believe my great grandparents were not slaves. Yeah. Okay. But yes, I keep on learning about slavery. Yes, it is good at learning about slavery, but I don't want it to be directly attached to me. And uh, this is exactly okay. what yeah. the system is doing. That's what it does. Trying yeah. to directly attach it mm -hmm. to us. And many of us have failed to realize that. And it perpetuates we, it as well. Uh, we, we, we fall for the bit. When they bring up these, these we national fall, in we incidents the with we race the issues bait. and race relations. Mm -hmm. You know, they perpetuate this, this whole racial thing. Uh, one way we can just completely destroy this whole racial notion is just by stop acknowledging that these other races exist. Stop dealing with them. But don't, deal with, don't stop dealing with them to, to the extent where you just completely, um, uh, 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 how do I say, so in reality, not acknowledge in, their in, existence. In, in, in reality, <coughs> when it comes down to race, I don't think the word, the term race to me, it makes sense, it does not make sense. Because uh, physiologically speaking, we are all the same, okay? Simply, our pigmentation is different, mm -hmm. okay? Even, uh, even women, even 
even as some ethnic groups, the pigmentation is different. Even among black people, they have different shades, different pigmentation. Even among white people, they have different pigmentation. So, and uh, the term race to me, it is like, I simply don't get it. I try to get it, but I do not think a race is better. What, there's, what do you so, mean, like there's supremacy so, in, exa in, exactly. in a I, race? I do not believe in that. So What's your I'm definition sure. of, of, of physiology? Physiology? Yeah. So How things think, work? How things work? So they have uh, the same blood type, uh, many of them. So we have uh, all the blood types, right? Okay. So the blood type is not, of course, is not for one race mm -hmm. when it is not for the other race. Mm -hmm. yeah. So therefore, you may be a match for someone who is not directly a black person, according mm -hmm. to your uh, pigmentation. And you can get a donor from someone else. So therefore, physiologically, uh, our DNA is basically the same. The same, 99.9999, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, the only thing that is different is our pigmentation, the skin, that's it, mm -hmm. okay? So, and again, <coughs> If you are talking about uh, the cells in the system, all the cells in the system have uh, the same set of DNA. The only thing that is not there is basically due to expression. Because uh, the genes, some genes express when some genes are not expressed. Mm -hmm. So this is the same way I have uh, some liver cells that do liver function. So just on uh, the heart, the heart. But everything is basically the same. Simply some of them are expressed and some of them are not expressed. Mm -hmm. so, and when it comes down to uh, 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 the uh, skin color or whatever, uh, pigmentation, so I simply can't get it. So this is a, a problem in our society. I think that has to be with education. Educate people, hey, the outer surface may look different, but the most important part, which is the underneath, the underlying, underneath the skin mm -hmm. is more important. Hey man, uh, you know I, I think it's I have my it's, I have it's my that type of expressing myself. It, I think it's that type of education that's been you know uh, it has been, been lacking. Been like a, a factor. To, sorry, don't go inside of their house. Don't try to go inside of their house. Go build your own house and go you know start up your own lab. You know experience. We want that. The reason why we want to we want to the so, reason why so can I finish? We, we are, the reason why we want to deal with these people is because they have uh, a bounty of experience. They got that experience just by doing things. You go off and do things on your own, and there's no telling what you're going to find out. Okay, so one, one again, uh, we have to be very careful. So I don't know, uh, talking about uh, STEM education. STEM. Okay, you, 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 you just mentioned something very important. So in the past, I could open uh, my garage, I could go in my kitchen, and I could start uh, messing with some chemical reactions. But nowadays, I don't think I can do that because I think we are afraid of uh, terrorism. If I start doing this in my house, guess what? The next door neighbor is going to say, hey, I see this guy receiving uh, some uh, suspicious package or uh, some weird package uh, from FedEx, from UPS. Mm -hmm. And uh, guess what? The Fed is going to be where? At my house. At your door. And I think there is a problem when it comes down to uh, that's new, what, new research, because in the past, all the research, many guys uh, did things on their own. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, Thomas Edison working, all these guys. But nowadays, I don't think you can do that. That's fine. So you I know, think uh, there is a problem in our there, society. So, and again, tr a trying not to there, change on the subject here. <coughs> do you think we are going to be better off in the next uh, 10, 20 years if things continue the way here we are go. now? There, or will be... Uh, and it was that situation there, 2015 from that because well, it's just one, 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 one <coughs> it. because I truly believe the next wonder drugs will not come from big research research institution it will come from a guy working somewhere somewhere in his garage I it is believe that. all of these drugs are already coming from white people oh, not white people working in his garage there's a, a, a chemist biochemist over in um, San Francisco right now yeah. His name is Dr. Sasha Shogun. Uh, he, he's affiliated with the DEA, and all he does is inside of his house, you know, he's got a little garage behind it where he's set up a little laboratory. All he does is synthesize ecstasy and 
ecstasy analogs. Mm -hmm. He makes things like MD, MDMA, uh, 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 STP. You know, he's got a huge, huge, um, huge booklet mm -hmm. of just compounds that he synthesized that, that induce all these, these crazy psychotropic effects in you. So they're already doing it. Now here's the thing. Uh, when you were talking just now, I started to think about, you know, the stages of development of research. You know, the more you research, the more you're going to realize that you need other things. You know, other things are going to eventually coalesce around you. To keep these people from coming to knock on your door, you're going to have to get some security. And this is why the military is, the military is like one of the, the biggest um, proponents of, of, of cutting edge research. You know, they're the ones that are actually pushing the envelope whenever it comes to, to yeah, new developments. Because, um, and they have guns to protect whatever it is that they're trying to, you know, develop. Yes, what, what, what I was not trying to say is this. But what kind of guns do we have to protect ourselves? So, That's what I'm saying. No, the what, more you research, the more you're going to realize that you, you're going to have to have somebody there to, to, to watch your door, to look out for you. No, what I was not saying is this. That's what I'm saying. No, what I was not saying is this. Uh, it is not a question you need that to have uh, some form of security at your door or to watch on your re research. Mm -hmm. What I was basically saying yeah, is, this it, is, going is crazy. It, it, it is a lack of uh, education uh, and, not the general, the, and the general public. The general public is not well educated. The general public is not well aware of certain things when it comes down to research. <coughs> so therefore they are ignored about the STEM research. Right. What I'm saying is this, if you try to do this at home, your next door neighbor that is not aware of STEM does not know what you are doing, so most likely that person is going to, have to call the cop on you. Uh, and then, and the, cop, and the cop is coming to your house not understanding the process. Oh, yeah, most likely uh, you are a terrorist doing certain things. So, this is what I'm trying to do. So, so take, take your but, own advice. So, how do we do this? Take your own By advice. By trying to educate on the uh, uh, generation, I mean, uh, the population that. The next one, the drug, I may not be coming up from a bigger institution like a uh, USF or uh, something like that. Take so, your, take your do, own do, advice. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Take your own advice and move away from the city. Educate your children. Educate people in in the outskirts, of, you know, of, of major cities. You know, in the rural areas. Start up a little colony or whatever it is. A little um, township. Are you coming with me? Man, I'll bring some <laughs> women. I'll come with you. <laughs> Actually, I'll bring my own. <laughs> you bring your own? Yeah. But what yeah. about if you clone your own? And we can do that too, you know. You can do that too, right? Yeah, we'll do that too. I don't think he's with you there. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks that I'm kind of silly.